Hi, everyone. Welcome to Long Story Short, the podcast. I'm Megan. I am Wendy. And today we are talking about all of our sweaty summer solutions. We're talking about the fact that we sweat. We're talking about the places we sweat. And we're talking about the ways in which we handle it. We are going there. We're ripping the lid off this topic that nobody talks about. Totally, for sure. First, you know where else you can find us. You can hop into our Facebook group, which is Long Story Shorties. And you can join us on Instagram, where we are Megan and Wendy LSS. And this is a good time if you have considered joining our Patreon but haven't done it yet. There's a ton of brand new content that was just dropped last week. There's a new cleaning and organizing video from Wendy, as well as a new full length bonus podcast episode. We dropped a 10 minute teaser of that episode last week, but you can get the full thing simply by subscribing to Patreon. And if you're saying what the heck is Patreon? (laughs) It's just an easy way for you to support creators that you like. And in exchange, we provide bonus content to you for your support. And so if you would like to do that, we would like to reward you for it. The last bonus podcast that we put out out there is like one of my favorite ones to do. It's the, you know, chit chatty ones. I love them. Those, they're just so fun. I agree. And you can find all of that at patreon.com slash Megan and Wendy. Mm-hmm. We also love your emails, Megan and Wendy at gmail.com. And I think we have a few today in response to misophonia, which we talked about a couple episodes ago. Yeah, so we talked about this in our evening routines episode. And Wendy mentioned that one of the reasons that they don't eat together as a family is because she has misophonia, which means that noises, particularly chewing noises, bother her. And I agree. And we got so much feedback. It's not so much a specific email that I have to share, but it is a conglomeration. I got text messages. We got Instagram messages. We got comments on our Facebook group. So many people saying, oh my gosh, yes, I deal with misophonia. And we got an email from Lene who shared an article that says, People who have extreme reactions to sounds like loud chewing or breathing may have a super sensitized brain connection. Oh. So misophonia, which means hatred of sound, which is perfect. They've identified a connection in your brain that is highly sensitive to these noises. So I feel really justified in the fact that I feel like crawling out of my own skin when I can hear someone breathing or chewing. Well, I want to just clarify that when I hear chewing sounds, it's not like an annoyance. It's the only sound I hear. It is 10 times louder than any other sound that is happening at the same time. And my husband, who listens to the podcast, had heard me talking about this. And he now he makes fun of me. Like every time like he's eating something, he goes, ooh, am I triggering your misophonia (laughs) which then you know makes my my head explode but right anyway so if it's this sensitive brain connection what what's the fix for it do i need a lobotomy what's happening (laughs) is there some doctor somewhere who can snip that connection right this article did not offer a solution but i do think it provides some you know scientific basis for us feeling this way it's not just that we're cranky bitches oh okay (laughs) Cranky bitches. Hashtag cranky bitches. I love it. My husband does make fun of me a little bit for it, too. And I think it's one of those things that if you don't experience it, you can't fully understand how grating that sound can be. We mentioned in our Patreon episode that you may or may not have heard that we are considering planning a uh, trip for the two of us this summer. And you should go listen to that episode because Wendy tells me what a terrible traveling companion I am. I did not. I absolutely did not say that. <laughs> she goes out of her way to say that I'm not. But I. Um, That's what Megan heard. It's not what I said. <laughs> that is correct. But yesterday on Instagram, I asked for some suggestions. If you were going to go on a trip in Southern California within a couple of hours, where would you go? And a couple of things came up. So the top recommendation was Santa Barbara. Mm -hmm. The number two recommendation that we didn't even consider was San Luis Obispo. Have you ever been to San Luis Obispo? 
No, never. I don't. Neither know have there. I. I don't know what's there either than a college. I'm listening to a yeah. podcast actually about San Luis Obispo disappearance that took place Ooh. in your own backyard. Have you listened to that podcast? No, but I'm writing it down because I love that kind of stuff. Yes, your- and there was a recent break in the case. It's a twenty something year old case, and there was a recent arrest. So yes, thanks in part, they believe, to the podcast. Okay. And Ooh. also mentioned where Palm Springs, guys, this is an episode about how we get too hot. The desert <laughs> is not going to fly in the summer <laughs> for us. Ojai was recommended, specifically the Ojai Valley Inn and Spa. I'm actually going to a wedding there in October. Oh. Uh, the Madonna Inn, Temecula for wine tasting. But our friend Caitlin sent me via email her entire itinerary. Ooh. For her trip to Paso Robles. It's wine, right? I believe so. And I need to read you the first two lines for email, which says, We are staying at Hotel Cheval. Two words, S'mores Butler. Oh, now my interest is piqued. Indeed. So I think we have a little more direction. I'm going to get a couple ideas and send them over to you. And we can make a final decision based on like what's there. So, was it our last episode we talked about being stressed and having yes. anxiety? Okay. So, you talked about, you know, your to-do list and how that that alone gives me stress. Like, mm-hmm. writing something down, like, shifting laundry, folding clothes. Like, when you get into, like, the minutia of it all, like, that stresses me out. I know you like that because you like the completed part of it, right? Right. But then I was thinking about this. So our bedroom needs a lot of work. We need like shades for our windows. And it's just stuff that I have put off and put off and put off. It's because I'm too overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. And I thought, holy hell, I need to just make a list of the things that I need to do to get moving and complete this project. And I was like, yeah. That's when it's not overwhelming to me. Like, so I just want to say kudos, Megan. Thank you for the suggestion. <laughs> You're welcome. Breaking it down into actionable tasks. Call the blind company yeah. to get a quote on putting in blinds. Yeah. Call a painter. I don't know what you need to do, right? Order the things. quilt yeah. that you want. Yep, like, that break too. it down. Uh-huh. <laughs> because, yes, it does feel like redo my bedroom is overwhelming. Where do I start? But, yes. Totally. Breaking it down into actionable steps. Yay. And I think this is another reason why I don't really like traveling, too, because it's overwhelming in terms of planning it. Mm, I love the planning. See, I hate that part. But I think if I, like you said, like just make a list of the to do's and then work through those towards the final project. I like that I can get behind that. Yay. I can't get behind the daily to do list. Though, like, you know, I don't know how people poop. function without one, but I think that I have ADD. Mm-hmm. I'm not being, I know some people use that jokingly. Not, you're not being flippant about it. I'm yet. not. I genuinely, uh-huh. it's not something I ever struggled with as a child, but I don't know if adult onset ADD is a thing. Yes, it is. But I definitely struggle with focus. And if I don't have a, list of things that I need to do, it's challenging for me to A, remember what I need to do and B, Mm -hmm. stay on track. So they're very helpful to me. Gotcha. Let's talk about food. Dude, well, it was summer coming. Mm -hmm. You know, my daughter gets out of school in like the next two weeks and she's not a breakfast eater anyway. Mm -hmm. Like the days of eating breakfast before school are long gone, Mm -hmm. which makes me feel terrible as I'm parent because I'm like, I should feed my child before she goes to school, but she doesn't want to eat and she's grouchy about it. (laughs) So I didn't eat breakfast before school, but I don't think it was until like high school that I moved to that. Anyway, now that was summer coming, I need some breakfast ideas. This is a call to our listeners. I need some breakfast ideas for a grouchy teenage girl <laughs> who won't eat cereal. She won't eat pop tarts, toast, energy bars, or breakfast bars or protein bars, whatever. She won't eat any of that. And I am now again reconsidering a Vitamix so we can have like smoothies every day. Yes. Would she eat a yogurt bowl, like yogurt with fruit and granola? No. Zero percent. Okay. She'll eat a like an acai bowl, you know. 
Well, you know they sell those pre-made at Costco. The bowls? Yeah, like a bowl with the granola. You just defrost it. Mm, I don't know. I just don't know. I was uh, actually considering that Daily Harvest. I was looking at that website last uh-huh. night. But it's like, do you want a freezer full of like these cups of stuff? Like, it sounds amazing. What I, is that, that just feels like a stupid expense. Well, you know that I did a similar product, right? I don't think I knew that. I shared them on our Instagram story. So I did (laughs) Revive was the brand. It's exactly the same concept. They send you cups with frozen ingredients. You add the liquid of your choice and they make suggestions about what liquid is best, water or coconut milk or almond milk for these particular items. But you can really do whatever you want. You toss them in the blender and then you pour them back in the cup. And they're quite convenient. I did one round because they had a great coupon. So I got 12 smoothies for like $36, which seemed Uh reasonable. Obviously, you can make them for less individually, but you couldn't go buy a smoothie in a store for less than that. I love a deal. And it's a subscription service, so I did cancel right away. And I really liked them. But then I got in my head about, is am I spending too much money? And my kids have really basic smoothie interests. Like if I buy the frozen berry blend and add a little yogurt, my son likes that. Same thing, add a banana for my daughter. They're good. I like a little more of a variety in my smoothie, but not so much that I necessarily want to spend $80 on 12 smoothies. Yeah, you don't need like a papaya mango situation. Right. right. Like the yeah. mint cacao. I mean, yeah. it was very good. <laughs> but there's like 15 ingredients in these smoothies. Yeah. Frozen cauliflower. No, you can. Ooh. If you go on Pinterest, there's a million and one smoothie recipes. I know. And you can. I know you don't want to, but you can batch a bunch <laughs> of frozen ingredients and then they're ready to go. And you just dump them in the blender because that's the sticking point for me often. It's like, I want to make a smoothie, but do I want to get out six different ingredients yeah Not necessarily well i will tell you we tried that one year and i mistakenly put yogurt in the in the bag in the little ziploc uh, bag uh-huh. and it made such a freaking mess do not try to pre-freeze your yogurt with your berries would you, or whatever would you like do a it. trick for that yeah sure put the yogurt in an ice cube tray freeze uh-huh. it And then dump the yogurt ice cubes into your smoothie bag so that it comes out easily. Interesting. Okay. I'll look into that. (laughs) But I think the answer to your question, I'm curious to see what people say, but I think the answer might be that you are going to have to do a little prep ahead of time. You know? Something. Because the Pop-Tart cereal, easy frozen waffle situation that you can do right away, she's not into. Right. And, you know, she's got like soccer camp and right. all kinds of crap. Like I can't just send her without food. Like that's just, I can't do it. So well, I don't, I don't know. Is she interested in eating in the morning? Like, cause it doesn't have to be breakfast food. There's no rule that says you need to eat breakfast in the morning. This is true. Right now she's not interested in eating, be- eating because we have only so many minutes before, you know, getting out of the house right. in the morning and she wants to sleep as long as she can. And of course mm-hmm. she's got to do her hair and all, you know, whatever. So she's just not interested in eating. But then I'm understanding that she's hardly eating any lunch as well. And when she gets home from school, she's, she's starving. She's freaking hangry as hell she's so starving and then i find that she eats like as soon as she gets home from school all the way through dinner you know like like she eats like all the time because she's starving so i don't know has she tried those perfect protein bars the refrigerated ones i love those me too they taste like cookie dough yeah i don't think she's probably had one but that is a good idea i will i will check those out I think of all the available protein bar options, those are the very best. And they are refrigerated, but if you look on them, they say they last out of the refrigerator for up to a week or two weeks. So Mm -hmm. you could, they could easily go in a soccer bag and she could eat at her first break if she's not hungry right away in the morning. Exactly. All right. But speaking of snacks, Wendy has tried one of my favorites and has a review. Oh, my God. Megan talked about pop corner chips, the, specifically the kettle corn mm-hmm. flavor. This was in our, was it our favorite 
Snack and and snacks. Yeah. Yeah. I bought some at Target the other day. My daughter was at soccer practice. I was killing time. I was like, oh, there's those, those chips. I'm going to call them chips because I don't know what else to call them. Yeah. I almost ate the whole bag Mm -hmm. (laughs) in the car. They are so good. The kettle corn ones remind me of honeycomb cereal a little bit. Ah, yeah. Salty, you know? God, they're so good. So then I showed my daughter. I didn't eat the whole bag. I, like, resisted. But I I showed my daughter. I was like, ooh, you got to try these. She goes, oh, my God, I love those. Oh. I don't know where she had them at. And then my husband yesterday, he's like, oh, my God, you got to buy another bag of those because those are really good. So yay, popcorn or chips. And yay, Megan, for suggesting those because they're yummy. Yay. Have you tried any of the other flavors? I never have. No, but I'm down for it because I typically don't want like a sweet chip like that. Like I really debated in Target, like, do I get the kettle corn ones? The other ones that were there, I can't remember what they were. They might have just been like a sea salt or I don't know what they were actually, but I, I'll try them. I Yeah, I would imagine the other flavors are good, but I've only ever tried kettle corn. They do sell them in a individual bag size. Like at Costco, oh. which oh. I've considered buying. Like in a like in a big box? Like in a big box, yeah. Oh, God. I got to go over there today and get some of those. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which is nice. I kind of want my dream for summer is to have like this perfectly stocked kitchen. So when we want to yes. go somewhere, I can just put together like a quick lunch. And that would be one of the things like we could grab and put in our beach bag or our pool bag or our meeting friends at the park bag. I'm just planning for the perfect summer. It's all going to fall apart. But right now... First week of June, I'm ready. Do you know that's like my biggest hang up is like why I don't like to have people over because I don't ever have like food to feed people. (laughs) Like I'm never organized like that. Like if my daughter wants somebody to spend the night, it's always like, oh my God, what am I going to feed them? I have to, I have to go out to the store. We're going to order pizza or it's gives me such anxiety. I find that stressful too. Super stressful. You guys, if you also, I would love it if somebody, (sighs) I need like a, a checklist of items. Oh, we have a really good post that you wrote about pantry staples, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's a really good post to, I should refer to. But like just things that always have in the house ready to feed people if they're going to come over or even yourself. I need to know. Email us, please, please, please. I need your help. All right. Well, speaking of summer prep, we are going to take a quick break and come right back to talk about sweaty summer solutions. Welcome back, everybody. This topic was prompted, well, for two reasons. This is something Wendy and I talk about all the time. (laughs) But a friend sent me a message after a recent episode. I made a rogue mention of the Gold Bond powder spray. And she said, hold up. Tell me how you use this. Would this work for under your bra? Because I get sweaty there. And then it gets irritated, right? Because your skin is sweaty and your bra is rubbing against your skin. And I said, absolutely, it would. She actually had said she had talked to her doctor about it because of the irritation. And they had said, oh, use a powder. But she thought it's hard to get a powder up underneath your bra. Mm -hmm. Would the spray be easier? And the answer is yes. And the Gold Bond spray is one of many many products that we have come to know and love when it comes to managing the next several months of heat and humidity. So as we move forward, we're going to like share like our personal favorite products and other things that are out there. But I want to just tell you, like, thank God I have a friend like Megan that I can say, hey, I have like a sweaty butt. (laughs) What do I do? (laughs) Like, I didn't know like this was even a thing because nobody talks about it. Like when I was young, I never had problems with like sweating in places you don't want to sweat. It was only like the last couple years. And I think it's just, I don't know. Is it an age thing? I don't know. Like, is this just a normal part of life? I don't know. But nobody talks about it. Mm -hmm. So... If you have this issue, it is not a problem and you're not alone. So we're just here to talk about it. Well, let's break this down into categories. And first, let's start with the obvious. Let's start with deodorant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Because it's not as straightforward as it would seem. It's not like just go pick one because Mm -hmm. what works for me in December does not work for me in July, friends. Oh, interesting. So... A couple of years ago, there was an article that made the rounds in my 
internet circle. Uh, and it was, we'll leave a link so you can read the entire thing. It was on the website Racked. And the title is The Best Natural Deodorant is Acid. This is from 2018. And essentially what they are saying is the acids in your skincare products, like a BHA or a salicylic acid or a glycolic acid, work really well as deodorants. Not Mm. antiperspirants. They're Mm. not going to stop you from sweating. But they work really well to stop the odor. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because listed in this article are more expensive acids. Like they have a Pixie Glow Tonic and a Paula's Choice. Friends, you can use a Stridex pad in your armpits to stop the stink. Oh and my God, Megan. I works. totally forgot that you used to do that or do it. I I gave that that tip to my daughter, mm-hmm. actually, because, mm-hmm. you know, she plays sports and then come home and I'm like, dude, put some a Stridex pad underneath there. Mm-hmm. You're right. Stridex pads. Awesome. It's a cheap and cheerful solution. It works for a full day, although it's very easy to just swipe, swipe another midday if you need to. When I have gone off of this and back on, I kind of come and go from it. I think like, oh, I don't need to do that anymore. And yes, I do. But I have a hard time breaking the habit of still wearing deodorant. So when I'm doing that, I will typically pair that with a natural deodorant, like a Schmitz or a Native. And that combo works really well. Okay, I have a question. Is that something that's important to you, is using a natural deodorant? No, because here's what I'm going to tell you next. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) I was influenced on Instagram by someone who was commenting that they were having very bad postpartum body odor. And she was like, this has never happened to me before. My regular deodorant isn't cutting it. And so she swears by the secret Outlast sweat and odor. There's a couple Outlast versions, but this is the sweat and odor version. And I bought the clear gel, which I typically don't like a gel deodorant. I didn't realize that that's what I had bought. It also comes in a solid. I also bought the mini for my travel bag. And let me tell you, it's been hot here. So I've been able to put this to the test and I do not stink using this. So no, I am not married to the idea of using a natural deodorant. I like the idea. makes me feel better about myself. Like, hey, I'm doing something great. But sometimes you have to bring in the bad boys. Right. I I struggle with this too. As someone who's had breast cancer, there's always that nagging Mm -hmm. like idea of like, oh, was it the aluminum in this deodorant that I used that caused it? I personally don't think so. But Regardless, I love and always use the Dove powder. It's a solid. Mm -hmm. I'm opening the lid right now and taking a whiff of it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I don't know why. I love the powdery feeling of it. And so when you say that you use like a gel like that, that gives me creepy crawly feelings for some reason. Oh, interesting. Like, don't your pits like stick together when it's like a gel? No. So I like that like silky soft powdery feeling that the do you, but do you ever me. wear a sleeveless shirt you don't you know i don't because yeah. my wildebeest arms but um, stop um why what does that have to do oh because of white of Correct. white yeah i don't really like care that much to be honest you know when they talk about like natural deodorants don't have uh what antiperspirant in it That's right. right right like i don't care if i smell i just don't want to sweat interesting yeah. Uh, nobody's getting that close to me that, like, I smell, you know, that they would, oh, I might be fooling myself here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not saying I have ever smelled you. I'm saying sometimes I can smell me. Mm-hmm. And so if I can smell me, that means the person that I'm walking past in the grocery store can smell me. That means people that I'm sitting with at the pool can smell me. I mean, obviously, mm-hmm. I'm much closer. My nose is not that far from my armpits. So... <laughs> I agree. I would prefer not to sweat also, but I want, when it comes to a deodorant, I want the one, two punch. If I could have both no sweat and no stink, that's, that's my goal. And I have used like a, a certain dry, you know, that roll on anti burst. What's it called? Certain dry oh, designed where? to stop excessive sweating for up to 72 hours. Prescription yeah. strength roll on antiperspirant. 
that offers 72 hours of protection from excess sweating. Now, I can't imagine this is good for you. And here's the deal. Your body sweats for a reason. Right. Like it needs to express those whatever it's doing. It's a natural thing. Yeah. So I have to assume that if it's not coming out of your armpits, it's going to come out of your body somewhere else. Somewhere. I'm telling you, it's my knees. (laughs) I've told you my knees sweat, right? Like I don't know why. Behind your knee? We've talked about this. Kneecaps. Kneecaps. I don't know. That that I cannot. (laughs) I cannot imagine my. I mean, I sweat pretty much everywhere, but I don't think my kneecaps sweat. (laughs) Okay. I want to talk about. Lumi. We, yes, you had, please. You had mentioned it, this on another episode. I don't remember no. what episode we were talking about. No. I mentioned it to you directly in a message. Oh. And so if you haven't seen the ads, Lumi is basically an all-over deodorant. It's meant, I think, for your private parts is how it marketed. Mm-hmm. Like they show like people doing yoga and in a downward dog, all of a sudden there's like (laughs) wafting of odors, right? But it can be used anywhere on your body and the marketing is great. And I mentioned it to Wendy and Wendy said, I tried it and I don't really like it. So tell me what you don't like. Okay. So I purchased, uh, it comes in like a traditional looking stick applicator. You would twist it and it comes up. It's like creamy is how I would, uh, describe it uh-huh. uh, and they also have it have it in a tube yes. that you would squeeze out like that and you would apply it with like your fingers uh-huh now the reason i didn't like it is because i didn't like the texture of it i didn't like that creamy sort of like sticky did uh, it not dry down not that i noticed the reason I was drawn to it, because I was like, hey, if I could put this in my butt crack or wherever, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I was like, I'm going to try it. But it, it it didn't like it didn't give me that powdery feeling that I like so much. So it, it, it just didn't hit the way I wanted it to. I think it's probably a great product. And their marketing, like you said, is fan freak fantastic but i just didn't i didn't think it was that great also the scents that they have mm-hmm. one was tangerine and that's what i bought and i just was like not i didn't i didn't like it i just didn't like it it just wasn't for me but they it's do, probably great they do have some fun scents and they have a sampler pack of their scents i think it has 5 of them which i was drawn to but i do think i have enough other products for this that I can avoid that impulse purchase. What I think is so smart on them is because not any other like deodorant company talks about is like where you can put their product, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. because I think a lot of people probably put like a regular stick deodorant down South. Probably. Yeah. Bravo to them for like talking about it. Yes. Agreed. Yeah, if you guys u- use Lumi and like it and found a scent that you like, please email us because I'm definitely willing to try it again. Maybe just my experience wasn't wasn't uh, great. In addition to deodorants, where you need to talk about ways to stop sweat on the rest of your body, Lumi is one of those ways. But there is another product that we talked about at the top of this episode and I have used for several years now. And that is the not at all marketed to women, but highly effective gold bond. I prefer it in the spray version, not the powder. Can you hear that? I can. (laughs) I have it here in the closet. Megan influenced me, guys. It is in the classic yellow gold bond bottle, and it is their no mess body powder spray. Hear me out. You want the fresh scent. The original scent smells like a spray that was designed for balls. I am sorry to tell you. This is not a product that was marketed to women. I think they are missing a huge target market. That's not to say women can't use it. That's not to say you should feel ashamed of using it. I'm saying they need to change their marketing. And by that, I don't mean making it pink. Interestingly enough, I pulled this up on the Target website. And right next to the Gold Bond powder they spray, they show Gold Bond Ultimate Men's Essential Body Powder Spray in a two cents, a recharge and a nightfall scent yeah so So, i don't know what the difference is the price is the same i don't know if it is stronger i don't know if it's just the scent that's this different i don't really want 
a classically masculine scent for this type of thing. I mean, mm-hmm. I like a unisex scent. I use a men's, in quotation marks, shower gel. But I think for something like this, I want a real, fresh, clean, neutral smell. Yeah, I agree. I absolutely Especially agree. if it's going to be magnified when things warm up. <laughs> So where do I use it, you're asking? Yes, I am. That's exactly what I was asking. I use it under my bra. Like, just I use it behind my knees. I use it in the crease where my thighs meet my body. Like, Mm -hmm. right. I mean, anywhere your skin folds touch each other, a little bit of spritz goes a long way towards keeping those areas from getting sweaty and it absorbs the sweat as you do sweat and it keeps things from getting sticky and uncomfortable and i highly recommend it i recently published a post of an anti-chafing post and Mm. i did include the gold bond spray but i also included another product by gold bond which was like it's a it's baby powder i think it is but it's also supposed to help stop sweat but it's not you know the spray form like you have it's the traditional like you know with the little notches on top and sprinkle it out right body powder but yeah gold bond it's i love i like this spray too the only thing that i don't i spray it in my closet which i just did a few minutes ago and now i'm like the room is like a fog den. <laughs> you know what i mean i can't see anything it's a little overwhelming and like tight spot so spray in a open arid space mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah there are other products that have a similar effect we've talked before about the mega babe line and their bust dust was specifically designed for using in between and underneath your boobs they also make a body dust which you can use anywhere although there's no reason you couldn't use the bust dust anywhere i would mm-hmm. imagine it's the exact same product I have that here right in front of me, too. It's one of my favorites. And the application, the design of the bottle is really smart. Is you? Do you have this? The bus dust? Yeah. Right in front of me. Yeah. It's a non-aerosol spray. So it kind of gives you like a puff. Yeah. It's great. You can just get it right under your boobs and just... Psh, psh, psh. It's fantastic. I Both love this one so much. The Mega Babe and the Gold Bond are talc free. So I honestly don't know the negative effects of talc, but they do market them that way. So if that's something you are paying attention to, are you spraying it right now? <laughs> no, I was rubbing it in on my body. <laughs> so I really like this product as well. Mm-hmm. And then they also started making, uh, it's called Is it called Magic Lotion? I think it is called Magic Lotion. And essentially, it's a lotion that turns into a powder that you can use in areas where you might get sweaty that will help absorb the sweat. And I think this would be nice, again, for places like your inner elbows and behind your knees and on your kneecaps. (laughs) On your kneecaps. You also like a product from Lush. I do. It's called Silky Underwear. It's basically the same thing we're talking about here. You know, Lush is a vegan product. So that may be, if that's important to you, maybe that's a standout. Yeah, Silky Underwear. It's just a dusting powder. It's the same thing, really. And I love to feel powdery. I like, I, I think that's what I'm going to go for this summer is a I'm going to get one of those puffs. You know what mm-hmm. I'm talking about? I saw them on Amazon recently. Just I'm just going to get a big old puff and just powder it up like I'm a grandma. For my entire life, my mom has used a Jessica McClintock body powder with a big powder puff. And as a child, I obviously couldn't understand the appeal, but I certainly (laughs) do now. I mean, she's just like powder puffed her body and she always looks fresh as a daisy. So where does she get Jessica McClintock powder from? I would imagine now she's buying it online. Jessica McClintock was the shit when we were in high school, right? You needed a Jessica McClintock prom dress, if I recall. Well, when I went to Cotillion... I was just going to say, I knew it was going to be Cotillion. Did you get a white (laughs) Jessica McClintock dress? We didn't wear white dresses to Cotillion. Cotillion, you wore whatever color, but I definitely had the bubble-skirted Jessica McClintock dress... For one of my cotillion dresses. Yeah, I think I had a yellow one for like my eighth grade graduation. Oof, hideous now if I think about it. But it was the shit at the time. Let's talk about what we're wearing to stop the sweat. Are there there certain clothing items that help? Whoa. I know, I'm just dropping stuff left and right here. Clothing items? Well, you know me. I'm a big fan of the slip short. Slip shorts! 
If so you don't what know brand what, do you like? I wear Under Summers. That's the one I like. It's the first one that I've ever purchased. Slip shorts are like a silky. It's like a slip, but they're in the shape of shorts, guys, basically. And they are made to keep you cool and anti-chafe. And they're not constricting like a pair of Spanx would be. They're just mm-hmm. a nice, lightweight, under your clothes option. Right. For under dresses, you don't mm-hmm. wear them under anything else, do you? No. Mm-mm. So if your thighs rub together, you're not going to get the thigh shave and helps just kind of keep things flowing. I like them too. I really only like them under longer dresses because I always feel like under shorter dresses, they're going to like my dress is going to fly up and you're going to see like a nude colored slip. I I don't know what, what bothers me. What I like about the under summers and even the jockey have these two. They have shorter ones. I don't know if that's a newer thing for them, but they have a shorter length one. So they're not like, you know, down down your above your knee through your thigh right <laughs> i have the jockey ones and jockey makes a cool feel one yep i also like two products in addition to instead of the slip shore i like the mega babe thigh rescue which is in a deodorant looking tube it just looks like a tube of deodorant you roll it up and swipe swipe it on your inner thigh to protect yourself from chafing people btw you yeah. can also use a regular stick of deodorant for that too so That's- don't feel like you have to buy something that is like specifically marketed for right. this while i love the mega babe products you can use your regular old dove or secret as well Yes, and that's exactly what I was going to say. That's what people were using prior to that. There's products that are designed for runners like Body Glide because runners get like arm chafe as they're running or leg chafe. So that works as well. I was doing my research for, for yeah. that anti-chafe post. If you keep your skin dry, that's like the best suggestion, even though if you're like inner thighs touch, then put a powder on and then you can... If you don't want to just leave it powder alone because that may like rub off, you can then use like the anti-chafe like stick or whatever. The mm. Astro Astro Glide. It's not Astro Glide. I say it every single time. Body, Body Glide. glide. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I think there is a process to this, but but yeah. I sleep in a bra every single night. Regardless of season. But if you don't sleep in a bra and you get sweaty in the middle of the night, I would like to suggest that there are some very inexpensive options that do the job of just keeping your boobs from touching each other and touching like the rest of your body. Cause I just don't like that feeling of skin touching skin. Mm-hmm. And so I'm having a very hard time pulling up exactly the version that I have. It's tagless <laughs> oh, okay. and seamless. It's so comfortable. It has a tiny bit of support, but not so much it doesn't feel like a sports bra. It doesn't feel constricting. It honestly feels like you're wearing nothing. During quarantine, this was pretty much the only bra I wore. It was like a bra in name only, right? It's so comfortable. And I'm 99.9% sure that it's jockey, but I will confirm that it's $9.99 at Target. I have several of them. We'll find it and we will link it. I will find it. Tell me about your favorite Amazon dresses. So I have... I've worn these dresses for years and they are like around $20. They look like a big t-shirt. They feel like pajamas, but I wear them to travel. I wear them as a pool cover up. I just like them because they (laughs) just skim your body and you basically feel Mm -hmm. naked. But if you know me in real life, you've seen me in this dress in many colors. I have it (laughs) in a tie dye that I like for a pool cover up. I have it in a solid gray and I have it in a navy blue I really like these for like a house dress in the summer, but also for the kind of thing that you could totally wear out and you look dressed. I can't recall. Is it sleeveless or is it like a cap sleeve? It's a, yeah, like a short, it's a short sleeve. Okay. You've seen me and I've worn it one million times. I would also like mm-hmm. to say, guys, embrace the shorts. Always. Look, take it from me, someone who used to wear jeans all summer long because I didn't want to like, I have not great legs. But a couple summers ago, I just was like, enough. I'm done being miserable wearing jeans when it's 105 degrees. I'm just going to wear shorts and deal with it. And you know what? Nobody cares. Nobody cares except for me. So nobody just cares. wear the just shorts. Just wear the shorts. You look great. Just wear the shorts. Just wear the shorts. Just wear the shorts. You know what I just recently bought for my Stitch Fix? I gave one to you. (laughs) 
just re- gave away one to you. What is, are those like, you know, like, uh, whoops, those, you know, those cover up things, you know, that like shawl type. I just bought another one. I gave one to you and then I bought another one. And I think that, you know, I'm very uncomfortable wearing dresses. And so maybe if it's a sleeveless dress or a tank top, I'm just going to throw this thing over it and just feel, I'll feel a little more comfortable, but still light and breezy, you know? Yes. You know what else I bought to go over like a lightweight dress is a chambray button down shirt. Mm. So kind of gives you that like denim jacket vibe, but much lighter. Because I'm I wearing just my, like my favorite chambray shirt right now, actually. Yeah. See, I, I think it. that would look great over dresses because I like I like a little bit of layering. So I a like lightweight layer that's not a jacket because I'm done with jackets until November. Okay. All right. Moving on. I want to talk about makeup. Uh huh. I hate like my face to feel sweaty if I have mm-hmm. like a, I'm going to say a full face of makeup. I don't wear a full face of makeup typically, but I hate wearing like a cream foundation or a liquid foundation during the summer. I hate it, hate it, hate it because I just feel sweaty all the time. Mm-hmm. So I, this is the time of year I usually transition into like a mineral powder makeup because. Mm-hmm. Obviously, if you haven't seen the theme, I like powdery stuff, Mm -hmm. and I just want to keep it easy and breezy and light. Mm -hmm. What do you do for makeup? Do you still wear BB cream that you like so much? Well, I have a question. What mineral powder makeup do you like? Is there a foundation that you like? Uh, It's it's by Jane Iridell. Okay. Um, I, I buy it off of Amazon, to be honest. There's, like, some specialty shops that sell it, but but. Yeah, you can get it from, like, the Jane Iredell store on Amazon. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I just buy it from there. I, earlier this year, bought an It Cosmetics powder foundation that I really like. And I it's also so fast to apply. So it's just like a swirl it on your face and you're done. I am also really loving, I did a whole thing on Instagram. There's a new foundation from wet and wild it's their liquid hydrator and it's a really lightweight foundation it's really more of a tinted moisturizer but it has some good coverage to it and i like you i hate when my face feels sticky and sweaty but i am using a new to me makeup technique i've talked about it a lot but it's really effective everyone's talking about it on tiktok but full credit to the makeup artist wayne goss who originated this idea and basically If you want your makeup to stay on your face, do your skincare, dust with translucent powder, spray with a setting spray, and then do your makeup on top of that. And I know that sounds very heavy. I'm telling you, it doesn't feel heavy. It doesn't look heavy. It doesn't make my makeup look cakey. It just holds onto my foundation, even when things start to get sweaty and warm and under normal circumstances, my makeup would slide off my face halfway through the day. Mm -hmm. It's very effective. And I'm very happy with that for summer. Hmm. What what like toner spray are you using? The one I'm using is the NYX Bear With Me. It is a prime set and refresh spray. So it's meant for all of those things. And I've been using it for weeks and weeks and it does not irritate my skin. So I've been I've been really happy with it. I might try that. Do you have problems with like this is what I always have problems with is like sweaty eyelids. And I know they're not sweaty. It's just like oily probably. Like my face produces a lot of oil in the summertime. Mm-hmm. And so my eyelids get like kind of oily and then my mascara I'll end up looking like a raccoon underneath. Like what do you do you have those problems at all? My mascara doesn't typically come off, but I always wear an eyeshadow primer always every single day of life. So I have oily eyelids year round. My eyeshadow would never last without an eyeshadow primer. Do you wear like the primer just alone some days if you don't want to put, you know, no. shadow on? Mm-mm. It's not because it has like a tacky base. You need to put something over the top yeah, of it. it would totally. feel, yeah. It would not work on its own, but it's something to grab onto. All right. A few last tips. Mm-hmm. About staying cool. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, if you have air conditioning, use it, right? We talked on a recent episode. My husband and I battle about the air conditioning nonstop. So I need lots of other solutions for staying cool, especially because I want to leave the house. So we have fans everywhere. I have a little mini fan on my desk. We'll drop a link in the show notes. There's, It's available at Target for $10. I've actually moved it to my bathroom counter, and I turn that on while I'm getting ready because I get hot while I'm getting ready. It's the hair, isn't it? It's the hair. It's, it's just standing up. 
<laughs> also, I'm so excited about something I am about to buy for myself, and that is the neck fan. Have you seen this making the rounds? I saw you send me a picture of it, yes. <laughs> so it was originally shared by the Instagram account, Things I Bought and Liked, and I often trust her recommendations, and it is essentially, a, I would say, a U-shaped fan that you put around your neck, and it just rests kind of on your neck and shoulders, and it is blade-free, so your hair is not supposed to get caught in it, and it blows air on your neck and your face and I get very hot and I do not care how nerdy I look cruising around in this thing because if we're going to be on vacation where it's hot and humid man this will make me a nicer person <laughs> I'm buying it I'm buying I it I think you should I I think it's really funny but if you're going to be miserable otherwise yeah get it right don't yes. be miserable on your trip cuz you're hot my family is going to make fun of me, and I don't care because I will be a nicer wife and mother if I am slightly cooler. And then they're going to be real jealous that they don't have one. They will be because, you know, we went to Disney World a couple years ago, and everybody has those, like, water fans, mm -hmm. you know. And those are fine, but you're, you know, a neck fan? Next level, I think. Well, and the water fans, here's why I don't like, like, on my face. I don't want to spray water on my face if I'm wearing makeup. Mm-hmm. But I do enjoy those water fans. They are nice. And you should, if you are planning a trip to Disney, please buy those before you go because they're like $30 in the park and $6 at Walmart. Yeah. Also, I have a question on the neck fan. Is it, it, it runs off batteries or mm -hmm. what? So you I, charge I it with a USB charger. Oh, cool, cool, cool. I wonder how long it lasts. Yes, I don't know, but then you could recharge it with your portable charger, which I take with me everywhere when I travel. Mm -hmm. So I'd rather charge my fan than my phone. <laughs> <laughs> You're so funny. Okay, did you buy the chili bed? No, not yet. Not yet. So the chili bed and its knockoff versions are essentially a mattress pad that you put on your bed that it runs cool water through throughout the night, providing a cool sleeping surface. And the reviews have made me want it more than I've wanted anything else in my life. And I have not bought it. I am strongly, strongly, strongly considering it. That I think the reason I haven't done it is it hasn't gotten that hot here. It's still nice and cool at night. Mm -hmm. So I'm not miserable yet. But just give me one hot 80 degree at 8 p.m. night and that thing's going to be primed to my doorstep. Totally. I have like a cooling pillow. I think that's a really good uh, mm -hmm. investment. Well, not even an investment. You can buy like a very affordable cooling pillow from Target. And the one I have, though, is it's like a memory foam, but it's cooling as well. So I'll leave a link to it. I don't know what the brand is, but I love it. I don't need a chili bed because we like to pump that AC at nighttime. So you also I have solar on your house. So it's not there's yeah. no like also yeah, exactly. Wendy and her family. They're not like nickel and dimers like my husband is. Stop <laughs> Who's like, it. You're bankrupting me with the air conditioning. I know I will someone else out there can understand the air conditioning expense argument. I'm sure. And I'll tell you, before we invested in solar, our, we have a pool and mm -hmm. we have a electric car and prior to solar, our monthly bill would be upwards of $700 oh, in the summertime, gosh. right? Now that we have solar, it's way less than that. We're talking $25 maybe at the max. We like to keep things cool mm -hmm. <laughs> around here. It's I, it's a priority for us. That's right, whatever. Anyway, I understand. But the drawbacks to the air condition at nighttime is like my husband and I are both stuffed up in the morning. We mm -hmm. can't breathe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know, give and take. My last note is never underestimate the power of a cold shower or a cool shower. In the summer, I'm a twice a day shower or oh, shower taker. Wow. Yep. Shower in the morning. And then my body is hot by the end of the day. And I feel the only way to completely cool down is in a shower. A quick one. I'm not like washing my hair twice a day, shaving my legs twice a day. No, no. But just mm -hmm. a quick cool down shower and then a nice, nice, loose calf tan. <laughs> Live <laughs> your best Mrs. Roper life. I was just going to say Mrs. Roper. <laughs> Powder up and enjoy. For sure. For sure. 
All right, guys, we are going to take a quick break and we're going to come right back and talk Megan and Wendy approved. Okay, we're back and it's time for Megan and Wendy approved and what I have has absolutely nothing to do with sweating. Okay. I've been using a new shampoo and conditioner and I was influenced by TikTok Uh because there is someone I follow who has beautiful hair and it is an inexpensive brand. It's the brand is Hask. You can get it at Target or any drugstore. And I spell it H A S K. Okay. And it's about $4.99 for the shampoo and conditioner each. They're very affordable. And I've been using the Keratin Protein line, which is a smoothing shampoo and conditioner. And I really like the way my hair feels and looks using it. And I also purchased their coconut oil leave-in spray, which is designed to condition and serve as a heat protectant. So I use this after I shower, but before I blow dry my hair. And for an inexpensive hairline that I think is effective, I'm enjoying the products. Is that a new, a new, like, brand for Target to carry? I've never seen Hask, ever. I don't think it's a new brand, but quite frankly, I don't know. There are so many hairlines at Target, it blows my mind, but... I had never looked for it. Okay, let me tell you, this is such a side note, but I am recently subscribed to Pros, that hair stuff. Yes. And you know, it's not cheap, mm-hmm. but I, using it now for a couple months, I'm like, I don't feel like it's any different okay. than maybe a $4.99 uh-huh. bottle of Hask from Target. So I might try that. I would ask. not suggest you use the smoothing line. I would never because it's way it would, too heavy for my fine right, hair. Right. Mm-hmm. But they have other versions, a repairing version, a biotin boost version. That's what I would need. Definitely. Because, yeah, yeah. you know, I'm always, so my hair's have, always falling out. They have lots of options. So that's my recommendation this week. All right. So here is mine. Now... Every house probably has a shit ton supply of hand soap, right? These days. I recently purchased the Mrs. Myers Clean Day Hand Soap in the scent Oat Blossom. Have you seen it? No. Have you smelled it? No. I love Mrs. Myers. Mm-hmm. I love their basil scent. I love basil's probably my favorite. They have a rose, a peony. Pe- am I even saying that right? Peony, like peony? the flower. Yeah. But this oat blossom, I believe, is new. And I think because, you know, oat is very hot right now. (laughs) So they jumped on the oat train. But it smells so good. I But I can't put my finger on what the scent is. What the heck's an oat blossom? What's an oat blossom? Do oats flower? I don't know. Does it come out of the ground? It does, right? Somebody please tell us where oats come from. (laughs) Yeah. Anyway, it smells so good. And the label is like, it's, you know, it's the regular old Mrs. Myers label, but it's kind of like a brown label. Trying to convince you this is their like natural line of the earth. I guess. Yeah, I guess. But uh, it smells so freaking good. I'm like, I'm going to buy a bunch of them now. They're so good. Do they sell it in the big refillable size? Mm, Not that I've seen. I don't know if I've ever seen a hand soap in a refillable size. We bought the Mrs. Myers refill and hand soap, not dish soap. Yeah, hand soap. I think we have Mm -hmm. the, I think it's maybe like a sea salt. I'm sorry. We have the Mrs. Myers clean day rainwater hand soap refill. Thank you so much for coming along on this sweat journey with us. We hope this information was helpful. If you have an additional solution that we have not talked about, please send us an email. We will share with the class. We would love to hear from you. We want your breakfast ideas. We want your lunch ideas. We want your sweat ideas. (laughs) And we will be back next week with a brand new episode. So until then, have a great weekend, everybody. Goodbye. Bye. (laughs) 